Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the October 1st, 2014 Lorraine County Board of Commissioners meeting. Ms. Beidelman? Should I call you Pastor Beidelman now? Call me whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's nice. <laughs> Always. Okay. Lord, we just thank you today as we come together for our county commissioners meeting and we thank you for them and their staff and the job that they have to oversee our county government. We just continue to pray for the wisdom and knowledge they need to make the right decisions and work together for the betterment of Lorraine County. And we thank you for our county and we thank you for our country that we're in a country where we have a right to freedom. And we thank you for those men and women that continue to fight for that right for us. And we don't take that for granted. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Commissioner Kokoski has our dog today. This is a recognizable dog for everyone. Uh, yeah. Looks just like Toto from The Wizard of Oz. He's uh, about five years old. He's available when? He'll be available on Friday. So come out to the kennel, find your new best friend. Um, we have 33 dogs, so we really need your help. Uh, come down and adopt a dog from our kennel. You could check us out on Facebook if you want to see what dogs we have available. But we have plenty, so come and see us. Thank you. Madam Clerk. We have a proclamation for making October's manufacturing month. Lawrence, you want to come up here while I read the proclamation because you're accepting this, correct? Yes. Um, in the matter of proclaiming October Manufacturing Month of Lorain County, Ohio, whereas October 3rd has been designated National Manufacturing Day by a consortium of American manufacturers and October been designated Manufacturing Month by the State of Ohio, to bring the career potential of manufacturing to students in our transitioning workforce. Whereas Lorain County has a long proud tradition of manufacturing dating back to shipbuilding in 1819, steel in 1894, and automobiles in 1904 with nationally recognized educational institutions, Oberlin College founded in 1883, Lorain County Community College in 1964, and the Lorain County Joint Vocational School in 1971. Whereas Lorain County is home to 405 manufacturing enterprises, employing 17,196 workers with an average wage of $59,642. And whereas by 2030, nearly 80% of the baby boomer generation will have left the workforce and will need to replace those workers with qualified and trained workers looking to continue to make America and Lorain County great. Whereas Lorain County manufacturers, Flavor Seal, Nordson, SureTech, Dogus, and educational institutions, Lorain County Community College, Lorain High School, Lorain County Joint Vocational School, have committed to hosting open house tours, panel discussions, and other events. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Lorain County Board of Commissioners that the month of October shall be designated Lorain County Manufacturing Month in recognition of job creating local manufacturers, their employees who make goods sold throughout the world, and the educational institutions providing our next generation of workers with the skills to succeed. Witness our signatures this first day of October 2014, Lorain County Board of Commissioners, Ted Kalo, Lori Kowkowski, and Tom Williams. Lawrence, you want to say a couple words about Manufacturing Month for us? Uh, yes, on behalf of the entire Lorain County Growth Partnership, I'd like to thank the commissioners for this proclamation. Um, as you mentioned, manufacturing is critical in our economy and continuing to have a skilled workforce 
is the first step in doing that. So we've scheduled a series of events throughout the month to highlight these careers. We're lucky enough to partner with the businesses you mentioned who are opening their doors to the public to get a first-hand look at some of these potential careers, as well as having other manufacturing leaders go to these high schools for panel discussions on what skills will be needed by our workforce. And we'll be going to them with this proclamation to present them for your, to show your appreciation. Wonderful. Thank you, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Clerk, can we roll right into the presentation from the Metro Parks? Yes. Jim's here. Yep. Okay. That's him. <laughs> Lorraine County Metro Parks, connecting to the future. So good, morning. good morning, Jim. Oh, Welcome. good morning. I thought there was like benediction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good morning, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Cordes, Mr. Ennis, Ms. Upton, um, and the audience here. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to present our 10-year our plan um, going forward here. That's our strategic plan. We only do this once every 10 years, obviously, hence the 10-year plan. Um, and it's the, uh, this is a review of the things that we've accomplished in the last 10 years and then what we hope to get, uh, get accomplished in the next 10 years with, with everybody's support. So our, our mission statement, um, pretty self-explanatory, again, about the use, enjoyment, accessibility of every citizen of the county. We're here to promote and demonstrate the wise use of our natural resources um, and striving to preserve and create a diversity of, of ecosystems, providing an educational and recreational opportunity compatible and to promote the conservation of these resources. Um, as I'm sure the commissioners are aware, again, we are actually a political subdivision of the state of Ohio, Ohio Revised Code 1545, and that's our primary function is the preservation and conservation of the state's natural resources. Um, so again, reviewing, uh, this is our, our map in 2014. What you see here is in the green, uh, what was already there prior to uh, the last 10-year cycle, What's shown in the red is the, the parks, facilities, the additions that we were able to accomplish in the last 10 years. Uh, committed to clean and safe parks. Uh, we have 14 rangers, service rangers. And again, our rangers are not just law enforcement, but they're also service. So um, while they have a badge, they're also carrying shovels and chainsaws and drills and emptying trash cans. And that, that's important because they're out in our parks, um, maintaining that high level of visibility and, and talking to the public about their needs and concerns. Um, even though some people chuckle at this, we do take pride in our, our restroom facilities. Every one of our outdoor facilities um, is a real flush toilet. We only have one pit toilet left down in uh, Burr Oak and we're trying to find a way that we can make that, uh, convert that over, but being down the floodplain is a little difficult. So um, over two million visitors annually in 28 diverse parks, which actually at the time this was, uh, was made, uh, once we get that Grafton piece, uh, the old Royal Oaks will have actually 29 parks. The fiscally responsible, again, we take a lot of pride in, in, in the 57 years of the Metro Parks. Every one of our audits have been perfect. Um, as, as you know, and, and in conjunction with what you, what you folks deal with, you know, we take that, uh, the use of those tax, taxpayers' dollars very seriously. We, uh, we embrace that trust. We, we take that against seriously going forward about making sure that we're very prudent in how we spend and invest our money. We have 61 full-time employees, 10 part-time employees. Um, I think if comparatively speaking, and it's, it's outlined in that plan, uh, if you take our number of acres, number of residents, acreage we have, um, the fact that we're ab actually able to get that done with 61 full-time employees, um, we're pretty proud of. The staff works hard. They're very diverse. Uh, they do what has to be done to get the job done. and um, very prudent and very flexible in, in getting their tasks done and for the enjoyment of the public. Uh, we remain focused on education. Um, we have 10 full-time naturalists. We have eight major program areas, arts, nature, recreation, education, history, it's, kids. Um, actually, is exemplified by the, the journal this morning. Um, that was a great opportunity to, to talk about you know, the school groups that come and visit our facilities. Uh, these were a group of first graders that came through. Uh, reporter, we just kind of got lucky. Reporter was kind of rolling through, was looking for a photo op, and 
and was able to get that in the journal to talk about our, our great educational programs that we offer uh, year-round to the kids in schools, et cetera. More than 2,000 programs in 2013, almost 1,500 public programs where almost 100,000 people were served, uh, almost 500 requested programs, and, um, and again, our naturalists have, have done those programs to, uh, in accordance with the Ohio Academic Content Standards so that we're closely allying ourselves with what the, uh, the teachers need and the schools need. Recognize the need for the arts. Uh, Pretty, pretty substantial nationwide, actually, as, as everybody's gone through a little bit of uh, economic bruising in the schools. We've, uh, we want to embrace the arts. So we, we struck that partnership up with uh, True North Cultural Arts several years ago. They're based in Sheffield at our French Creek Nature Center. Um, we're able, we're, with that, we're proud that we're able to bring some theater productions. Um, one coming forward here in uh, next month is going to be right off of, quote unquote, Broadway is the Adams Family Musical. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. We, we try to get somewhere in the range of eight to 10 quality productions here in the county to, to bring that forward. And again, through True North, we're looking to expand that, that partnership and share the arts, spread those arts throughout the county. 33, 30 plus free concerts from, uh, from Lakeview, the Music Under the Stars, to Avon, the Miller Nature Preserve, um, do them on the, the back patio at French Creek. We've expanded that into a couple concerts over in the Columbia Reservation, and they are wonderfully uh, received. They're free. Again, they're spo we get sponsorships. Uh, musicians sometimes do them for free or for very little cost, and, and they're really enjoyable, and we're, we're proud that we can bring that forward. Uh, continuing to address the region's recreational needs um, last several years and then going forward, we're really looking to take advantage of what we have here in Lorain County with our waterways. Um, I defy almost anybody nationwide to talk about the accessibility of the water that we have here in Lorain County. Uh, the Black, the Vermilion, French Creek, and of course Lake Erie. So we're looking to take advantage of that. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're proud, and again, to embrace the history, the culture through the Steel Mill Trail. Um, you know, as, as you talked about the manufacturing, that, that's amazing, it's, it's awesome, and we, we hope that we can continue that along the waterways. But we also want to take that, again, along the Steel Mill Trail in, in Lorraine, and we, we, we share those, those stories that we get from people who go along the trail. Some, sometimes it's the first time they've ever really been able to view the steel mill and that history, and they go, Grandpa worked there, and that fed me and clothed me, and my dad, and my brother, and my family. And, and um, you know, we're looking to take that, not just from a recreational point of view, and, and sort of you know, turn that back and, and utilize that, but embrace that culture and that history. And, uh, and make the most of it. We have 70 miles of multi-purpose trails for hiking, biking, running, etc. That's a shot actually along the old steel mill trail, and uh, which goes to the old slag field. And I, I like to see that sh that shot because it's kind of a cool idea of uh, how nature really kind of <laughs> reclaims what was once a moonscape. Um, just left it alone. We paved the trail. Um, that was it. And this is what what nature has kind of brought back. And uh, it, it's, it's really neat to experience and, and see that evolution. Kayak launches provide greater access to our waterways. Again, I touched upon that, that we're, we're, uh, we've got this down at uh, Old Colorado, down in the French Creek near the mouth of the Black. And uh, this, this particular launch has gotten utilized quite a bit. Um, honestly, it's an ADA launch, meaning that you can walk your kayak out onto that platform and uh, put, your, put your boat in, go down the rollers on the rail using your hands and your shoes and your feet never get wet and muddy. And even the most experienced kayakers prefer to use that launch than, uh, than some of the ones along the black where uh, you know, they have to step in the mud and tilt and, and twist. But we did this because, of course, you know, we're about ADA and inclusiveness, but it's also about families that maybe never had a chance to do it, and young kids and, and some of the elderly. And um, it's a nice family-friendly way to get people in and, and let them enjoy that, that resource. Of course, Splash Zone in the Mercy Health and Rec Center, our newest addition up on uh, Route 2 on the, uh, in Amherst, right on the Lorraine border, providing year-round recreational opportunities. Uh, the upper left shows Splash Zone and the, uh, the field house and the, the basketball play and the court play we get and that walking track. That lower right is the, the backside of the Mercy Health and Rec Center with the inclusive playground. Our partnership with, uh, with Murray Ridge and the families and how we were able to to build, construct, and operate an inclusive playground where families 
with children of all abilities can go in and share in the experience. That, and I'm backing up that, uh, that splash pad. In June alone, with this hot, humid weather, we had over 5,000 visitors on that splash pad at Mercy this past summer, just for the month of June. It's pretty amazing. Again, talking about the, the respect, the honor of the, the county's history, this is a shot from uh, our, uh, again, our partnership with True North, the Road to Freedom presentation, where we talk about, the, again, the rich history about Lorain County and how we are such an integral part of the Underground Railroad. Uh, this is, again, up by French Creek near the borough home on uh, East River Road, where, we, uh, where that was a major, major point in the Underground Railroad. And uh, so we do these reenactments and bring the school groups in. And, and again, um, it's, it's great to share this with the people of the county, the kids, the school kids of the county, but we also get a great number that come from outside the county, and which is great that we've got that kind of, of I think, um, you know, cachet and, and reputation, but that also means those that come from outside the county pay a fee. And so we're actually, from an economic point of view, we're able to draw some dollars in and, uh, and expand upon that. So we're, we're quite proud of that. Again, focus on preserving our natural resources. There's more and more, I think almost on a weekly, monthly basis, you're hearing stories about another eagle's nest somewhere. And uh, we certainly have our share along Lake Erie and down at Sandy Ridge. Um, we've got a lot of visitation and a lot of investment in that. A lot of groups have come forward and said, uh, the school groups, can we get an eagle cam on that so we can have school during the school day, uh, you know, see, see how those things are going. So it's, it's pretty good stuff. So we ask going forward here, um, you know, what are we doing, how are we doing, what do you want to see more of? So through the course of the last couple of, of years, we've done surveys, we engaged the, the college, their, their public services institute, and to survey the people and ask how, how, we're, uh, how we're doing and what they'd like to see more of. So our services were rank, ranked on a, a scale of one to four. Um, most of our services we're at the four, I think we averaged 3.5. So people are pretty happy with what we're doing. What activities do you enjoy? enjoy the, uh, at that top, that kind of uh, turquoise line was hiking, walking, and, and biking. So by far and away, that's what most people enjoy. And then uh, for services or facilities sh should we consider for the future? Again, towards the bottom is the, the red line Again, far and away the greatest thing that, that people wanted more of are, are opportunities to walk and bike and, and, uh, and hike. So our vision for the future, what, what do we expect to do in the next 10 years? We call it connect the dots and staff has some fun with this, but again, we're, we're throughout the county. We, we take a lot of uh, pride in that we're in your town. We've got a major facility in, in every town and it's accessible within a few minutes of, of every address you can get to a Lorain County Metro Park. So here are some of our major ones that we're looking to focus on. Uh, the Grafton Connector shown on the left. We have the Indian, um, our Indian Hollow Reservation um, and trying to get this connected down to the Midview soccer fields on Chamberlain and ultimately down to, to 303. So again, moving forward, I think it's gotten some, some coverage by the Chronicle that we were, uh, were successful thus far in the acquisition using state clean Ohio money to acquire what was the old Royal Oaks golf course. And I say formally, and I want to emphasize that because people are asking us, are you going to bring the golf course back? And the answer is no, we're not. It hasn't been that for three years. The current owner had, was going to raise cattle, beef down there, um, and he's, he's let it go. And frankly, um, I guess from, from a very candid point of view, Lorraine County has enough golf courses. We have our own. We have Forest Hills. That's enough. <laughs> Uh, we put a lot of time and energy into that. We think it's one of the finest courses in the area, and we want to continue to focus on that. So we're not going to bring Royal Oaks back as a golf course. And as a footnote to that, we couldn't have gotten those state clean Ohio money if, uh, and Lori knows this as part of NRAC, but uh, it had, had, we kept, had it been a golf course, we couldn't have acquired it with that grant money. On the right is the Wellington Connector. Um, I thought we'd be, and I think folks who've, who've dealt with the Lakeshore Railroad, are, they're a great group of guys, but they're very diverse. And we are uh, days away, I want to believe, from, from the final signed inked agreement, um, sharing that Lakeshore Railway that goes from Wellington all the way up past Route 58 uh, into pretty much up near the uh, Quaker State and Loop at 254. They've got a 100-foot wide right-of-way. Um, we've been working with them for several years, talking talking through the possibilities, 
We're saying, look, your rail takes up so many feet. Can you share? Can you share about 10 feet with us to, so we can build a trail and get something very comparable to what goes through the Cuyahoga Valley National Park with their rail, their trains? Um, they're excited about it. They see the great opportunities. Uh, I think we've we certainly turned the corner, and we're going to get this this uh, signed agreement here very very soon. That will enable us to then go forward, get some grants, and build a trail from the south in Wellington. In the next several years, we're, we're very confident we can bring that into Oberlin, tie into our North Coast Inland Trail, and then the years beyond that, uh, continue to build that trail north, go up behind Dragon Ranch, get up to 58, and tie it into some of our other trails up that way. The Amherst Connector here, again, this is going to tie um, Amherst Beaver Creek to the new Holstein Reservation where Mercy Health and Rec is and uh, ultimately work back to tie that into Beaver Creek. This again has been, um, has already been approved. We've got our, we've got funding in place. We have to meet our match on that. Um, it's on actually, ODOT's coming in next week to, to walk some of the environmental with us. Um, but, but we're on the way and that's targeted to be constructed in 16. The Black River connector, again, and we've, we've continued to chip away and build sections. We've got that phase 4A that goes here in town from, from Gateway to the south side of the police station. Uh, 4B is um, going up West River and down Ford Road to connect to High Meadows. And the last piece of that puzzle will be Cascade Park. What you see here is um, what we're going to be uh, going here. This should be going out here and getting approved in the next six to eight weeks. The Black River piece that goes up uh, through the old Cromwell site in Lorraine. Um, we had to do a little bit of rerouting because of some, some wetlands and some change conditions from the last several years. But ultimately that trail will go to the lake and connect up uh, with our partnership with the Port Authority to the uh, either called the Dyke Disposal Site, the Spitzer Site, etc. But uh, point is we're going to be able here in the next several years to have a connection from Lake Erie down to, is it that bad, Lori? Or <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the uh, connect from Lake Erie uh, down that trail through Elyria, connect up to North Coast Inland Trail, and in that partnership and, and arrangement, we'll have 100 miles of constructed trail that'll take you almost to Toledo. And uh, that's just again another great, great partnership and collaboration to get that done. Uh, the reservation up in Sheffield Village, Sheffield Lake. Again, we've owned this piece at the end of Harris Road for several years. Uh, as anybody knows that working with the Ohio EPA and the Army Corps sometimes is, is a little bit of a challenge to get them off to, to get some approvals. But um, we're very close to getting, getting approval here to construct this park on that wetland, wetland piece. It's at, right at the border of Sheffield, Sheffield Lake at the end of Harris. Um, if you've been up that way, you know Sheffield Lake has constructed a trail piece from Ferndale Park. To up heading to the east to Idlewood, which is at the end of that park, and then of course, uh, Village of Sheffield got that safe route to school several years ago. So we actually did a uh, a favor. We, we made a little connector piece. Uh, not right now, you can connect from Harris Road uh, to Ferndale Park on our trail system in collaboration with again those those other fine communities. But we're looking to construct this park uh, with the nature trail system, some uh, wildlife observation, et cetera, here in the next couple of years. Can I back up one second? Yes. The Amherst connector, is that going to go under Route 2? No, no, no. It'll go from Beaver Creek. It'll actually go across Route 2. Um, the unfortunate part, I think, for us and, and uh, our, our good friends, uh, Mr. Kleiber from the County Engineers, will, will, you know, ODOT is being a little more aggressive here in their bridge fix-ups and reconstruction. I think the unfortunate thing for us is that bridge over Route 2 at Lake is too new. <laughs> We asked them, would you consider widening it? They certainly did that at, at Lear Nagel mm -hmm. when they put that over across 90. That's wide enough to accommodate a multi-purpose trail, right. which someday, again, in, in collaborating with Avon, we'll get that, we'll get a connection formed up there as well. So in very technical terms, the trail suspends as you go across that bridge, but there's two five-foot sidewalks. So when you're riding your bike, you're going to have to walk your bike across the bridge, but you're walking, you're walking, you're fine anyway. So, okay. yeah, that'll go across, again, Amherst Beaver Creek, head north up along Lake, make that right turn on Cooper Foster, and that's all multi-purpose trail. Okay. So, and just a uh, question. Uh, yeah, Tom. I live over in that area. Yeah. There's an area on the exit ramp that's grass. Will you yes. be putting a sidewalk there? So Correct. once you get... Okay. It'll all be solidly paved all the way across. Okay, um, any chance to put like a crosswalk through with uh, on that? I see a lot of joggers going yes. through, yeah. you know, potential for accidents, especially with the kids riding your bikes over to the junior high too. 
Correct. Yeah, okay. all, anything that, again, goes along that trail will be because the way it's funded through the feds, ultimately ODOT administers it, so we have to be in compliance with federal standards. So crosswalk signage, it'll all be in place. Perfect. And then, uh, I mean, what's not officially shown here, and I'm, I'm actually talking to the folks down at Main Street Amherst this week, um, we are, it's going to be several more years, but we're going to form a, uh, a trail connection that will go out of the south side of ba Beaver Creek, down Long Street, Martin, through the Springer Park, and bring it up into downtown Amherst. So the moral of the story is from downtown Amherst, easily past Holstein Reservation, heading north by that point towards, towards reconnecting to Beaver Creek and the lake, um, something very doable in the, in the coming years. So yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. We are too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, so kind of wrapping this up here. Uh, the last, the last big here is the uh, is our Cascade Park. Um, uh, again, the Chronicle uh, ed editorial this morning, you know, talked about that. That we're excited. We're we're continuing to meet here through the course of the month here with the city of Illyria, and transitioning um, our partnership. So, we're going to Metro Parks will be there effective January first to fifteen. We're going to start staffing it. We're going to start cleaning it up. We're going to be there on a full-time basis. Through the course of 15, we'll be holding a, continuing to hold a series of public meetings talking about how we're going to master plan and develop this. So with that, uh, again, I want to thank you and uh, take, take this brief opportunity that uh, we are on the ballot November the 4th, issue 8. It is a 1.3 renewal with a 3 tenths increase, which equates to 88 cents for the typical $100,000 home. Um, additional dollars for that um, but to do all the great things that we want to do continue to do them uh, we're going to need that support and uh, again I appreciate the opportunity to present this to the commissioners and uh, take any questions yeah. nice job Jim you yeah. do a very good job Thank you. Yeah. And Jim I just want to say uh, this is great uh, you, I'm an outdoors guy I use the Metro Parks with my uh, two kids um, you're improving the quality of life for the entire county you're fiscally responsible, and um, I just want you to know I'm going to be voting yes for the levy on November 4th. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jim. Go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> switch us off here. Well, we don't have no place to switch to. Oh, no, it doesn't matter then? Right. Okay. Madam Clerk. Under resolutions, <laughs> number one, investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalos. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalos. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalos. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalos. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Travel. So moved. Second. Discussion. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under the commissioners authorized various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction Marine County Commissioners. Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Commissioner Kalo. I do have a number of potential hires at Job and Family Services I wish to discuss with the board. Also, uh, ongoing litigation, pending litigation and an update on our uh, union negotiations with regard to our E911 employees. Uh, all of those topics are allowable under the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion, so I'd ask at the conclusion of a regular board meeting, we go into executive session and talk about those issues that I've outlined. Thank you. Thank you. Approve waive the reading of the minutes of September 24th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under EMA Homeland Security established a dangerous wild animal response team in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code 935 and Department of Agriculture. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under the engineer, amend resolution 1449 adopted January 22, 2014, awarding contract to Schreimer Construction Company, North Olmsted, in the amount of $309,600 for the Sugar Ridge Road Bridge 0214 design build replacement project in North Ridgeville. Said amendment is to reflect an increase in the contract of $11,176.02 to be paid for the bridge engineering account due to the guardrail system as allowed in specifications did not meet the requirement ODOT 
and an unknown storm sewer was encountered, which required replacement. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kellogg. Aye. Ms. Koski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Under the sheriff approved the 2015 op open dump enforcement agreement with the sheriff to cost not to exceed $190,415.49 in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 3734.57 G7 and authorized Deputy Anderka to fill the vacant position of former Deputy Jackson. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, yeah. Would you like to come up and introduce the new deputy? Bill? Or draws? This is the environmental officers that we uh, assigned to the sheriff and it's paid to our solid waste uh, department. Very important in finding those who are doing illegal dumping. So, and we had to replace an officer that we lost. So, good morning, Captain. Good morning. How's everybody? Good, how are you? Good. good. Um, this is Deputy Andurco. He's going to be taking uh, uh, the second position in there. Uh, Deputy Andurco has been with the Sheriff's Office for years. He worked Road Patrol. He did a lot of work in the Detective Bureau, a lot of sex crime, things like that, a lot of investigative civil office. So he's well versed as far as the county. Um, he's expressed an interest in it. Uh, we sat down and talked about it. Sheriff agreed to it. He works well with Bill Curtis. Uh, they know each other. They got a lot of projects they want to get started on. So this will he'll be an asset to the Environmental Crimes Unit. Good. Wonderful. Yeah. Welcome. I had uh, left a message for Keith Bailey to give me a report. I probably should have asked it through you since She's I found out today that he's off on vacation or out for whatever reason. So I'm sure that there's certain guidelines that have to be followed in order to pay for this through solid mm -hmm, waste. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're meeting all that well, criteria. Well, there are, and, and we, we do monitor those. But the extended benefit is more deputies in uniform right. that can help respond should other events occur. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's, that's key here. The reason I did this, redid this agreement on your behalf to include next year was to demonstrate our commitment going forward to continue to support our deputies and the sheriff and our law enforcement folks. Uh, and mostly they operate in the unincorporated areas, but they do have reciprocals with the cities and they do work together. Mm -hmm. uh, so under the mutual aid covenants, uh, everybody helps everybody. So I think it was time that we you know, once again reaffirmed our commitment to that. And going forward with a new contract, this was a good opportunity. It's a very good program. A lot of counties around the state have picked up on it also after yep. we started it four or five years ago. So. Yeah, basically there's a lot of counties that are now calling our Environmental Crimes Unit to find out how they're operating because mm -hmm. they've made some inroads in some areas that a lot of agencies are trying to figure out how we're doing it. Um, Bill was just telling me today he's doing some stuff with the mayor's office up in Lorraine to uh, some projects that are going to be starting here very shortly. So we appreciate commitment because it definitely is an asset to all of us. I Thank you. be a model mm -hmm. in a positive light. Yep, exactly. Welcome aboard. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Madam Clerk. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Cordes. Other than to uh, once again reaffirm that I think that the Metro Parks does a fantastic job and hopefully the residents will give them the additional resource they need to continue that. Uh, they are an arm of economic development in Lorain County. They do provide destinations and they do provide opportunities uh, to work with us as we try to you know, rebuild businesses here and, uh, and attract businesses here in Lorain County. They become more keenly aware of the amenities that a community has to offer. And that goes with the arts, that goes with nature, it all comes together in a mosaic of pieces to paint the complete picture of a community. And I think Metro Parks is, is a good partner with this community in doing that, so I encourage everybody to uh, go out and support the Metro Parks when, with their levy coming up in November. And yep, that's without a doubt, very anybody important. Anybody seen what they did with the Lakeview Beach and Lakeview Park um, will say, wow, they know, what they're, they know what they're doing. They do a fine job. And Cascade's going to be a heck Cascade, of a Cascade, yeah, it's it'll be a great place, I'm sure. get it done, I'm sure. So I have no other comments this morning. Thank you. Mr. Ennis? Um, I have no report this morning. No? Welcome back. Okay. Mr. Ennis' report. Um, just wanted to remind everybody that this Saturday is the Goodwill Fundraiser. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, I think I might have told you. Um, it's going to be down at Black River Landing at 5 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, you can call me for tickets all the way up until Saturday. If you call my cell, my desk phone, it will come to my cell phone so I can get with you and get some tickets. But um, they're $20. And 
each table is going to have a donated item from Goodwill and everybody uh, gets goes around to table to table and, and guess what the value of each item is and whoever is closest will receive a hundred dollar gift card. Um, we're going to have Cavs tickets, um, flat screen TVs, a Keurig, uh, a lot of fun things for Chinese raffles. So if you can make it out on Saturday, it's our second annual. I'd like to see a lot of people yeah, October there. October 11th. October 11th. Yeah, you, you said you this said Saturday. Saturday. I just want to make sure oh, you're talking to the people who are going to see it on TV. Right. I just want to make sure it was October 11th. You it is October 11th. Okay. I, I know. I told them you have a ticket and you'll yeah. be there. So I, I didn't get a ticket from you yet. I will get one. Okay. <laughs> All right. End of my report. Uh, Busy week, just a lot of catch up. I uh, want to congratulate Second Harvest. Uh, their event was Sunday night. It was a packed house. Uh, a lot of good donations from all of our local restaurants. Did a very nice job there. And like I said, it was packed and it's going to a good cause. They're expanding their building, a new building, and they're trying to raise money for a new tow motor uh, to move all their packages around. Great event. But also, uh, item that's been dragging on for a while now. Uh, I know Commissioner Williams, you had a conference call with Court Administrator Barilla the other day in regards to the DR drug issues. I had a phone call with her yesterday. Can we get that recapped? Yeah. You, you want to start, Tom? Well, we, on Monday, I believe it was, um, uh, we did have a conversation with uh, uh, Mercy's Hospital and we went through all the action items um, Mercy feels confident that they would be able to uh, provide all the services that were um, listed and then uh, Jody was going to go through and talk with the judges and then provide feedback to us and then um, if there was anything of concern we were going to uh, reach out to Mercy to see if we can address those concerns. So Jody, what did the judges have to say? Um, well, I did have an opportunity to talk to the judges, um, and you know, we kind of went over um, the information we received in the conference call, um, and you know, looked at that in light of kind of our overall concerns as well as um, you know the prior discussions we'd had with all the constituents. Because I know we've sort of become the spokesperson on this thing, um, but we're not the only. Um, you know, sort of agency in the county that, you know, has a need for a drug lab, obviously. Um, and I know that having reviewed kind of all the information that was received and also in light of the previous discussions that we'd had um, with the other concerned parties, um, at this point, I think that, you know, where we stand and, and the position of the others is consistent with this is um, that really it's more a local sort of centrally located drug lab is what would best meet everybody's needs. Everyone has a variety of needs. I know that some of the things that we had identified were our specific needs, um, but you know, everyone's needs are a little bit different. Um, and I think in light of that, you know, what, what we determined is it's still really kind of something that's more centrally located, locally, is what, um, you know, we stand by sort of the original request. Yeah. What about cost, Jody? Um, Cost-wise, um, I think that, you know, where cost-wise, um, what we're spending now is $25 a test. And I, the, um, I know that everyone that we've kind of dis discussed it with, the other agencies, we're fine with something that's in that cost neighborhood. Um, obviously, I know sometimes if it's a lower panel test versus a higher panel test, there might be differences, and, you know, that would be great to have a savings. but. Um, you know, we had previously um, forwarded that information as far as what everyone's kind of been spending up until now. Um, I think they're, you know, absolutely, and, and they've made alternative arrangements. Um, we've also identified a couple of other partners, the YWCA and Faith House, who also have a need that we hadn't previously identified. Um, but I think budget-wise, you know, everyone can kind of cover whatever needs to be covered, so. Yeah. Well, we're okay, in. But you do your side of it. Yeah, I'll have my conversation. We've actually we're in the same uh, field as far as the cost, and when there's a when there's a test that comes back positive, they actually go through. They retest it. They will take a look to see if individuals are um, using prescription drugs. Go through, talk with the doctor to find out. Okay, is this in the range? Should it test positive if they're saying that they're on? one type of medication so we do get the experience by having Mercy and their doctors on staff there. As far as central location, we have Elyria and we have Lorraine. So you actually have two locations and one is right over here on Abbey Road. 
uh, which is down the street. The adult probation officers could. Um, it's across the street, uh, you know, where the drug mart is. Oh, yeah, okay. Right over there. I think it used to be like a little computer mm -hmm. um, store over there as I well. It may one. still be there. Um, but they have that location. They're open 8 to uh, 4.30 or 5, I can't remember. I think it was 5. To 5 o'clock. They have the personnel. They can go through. They can receive the samples. They can test it. And they have the staff to do it. Here's my concern is when we take a look at what we're proposing, a part-time person to do the work, and you're looking at about 9,600 tests, then you're talking about additional tests that come in. That averages about nine, just over nine tests an hour that they have to do. They have to receive it, they have to test it, they have to report it, and if it's a positive, then they have to retest it. Mercy, they plan for their efficiency rate in that they average at about six. So we're going at 100% efficiency as far as the time that's allowed it for this. And also, if there is a positive test, they actually, when it goes to the lab, they freeze it, they keep it for a year. So if there's any type of challenge that ever comes back, they actually have the sample of what the person gave and are able to retest it. So there's no need to go back and have them retake a test where a month later they could say they may be clean. You actually have the test sample of when they went in. Well, excuse me. We don't have that need of saving the <coughs> test sample. We went over that last week. That's not something that we have to deal with. It's, yeah. in the, it's in the cost that they're already doing. This is a lab requirement. For them. Uh, for right. them. And it's but not for us. Not for us. Okay. But they do it because it's only for positive samples. So if an individual who is coming back and says, you know what, I want to challenge that because I don't believe I violated my uh, probation, we can actually get that sample and retest it. And that's the sample that it gave. Again, cost is comparable. We're improving the, um, the service because we have a certified lab now doing it. You have multiple locations are doing it. And they're going to be doing receiving of it. Uh, Mr. Cordes, I believe that you said in your proposal it was just basically testing it. It wasn't receiving it. Well, and part well, of the cost. I, it, well, you and I had multiple conversations right. on that, and I did indicate to you that I didn't think capturing a sample would be too terribly difficult if a if small amount of need arose. But I didn't put a lot of emphasis mm -hmm. on it in my proposal. But the people are there. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So they're, they're getting paid to be there. So if they, if they have to spend a, a, a few moments capturing the sample, then they capture the sample. But our discussions didn't have us capturing many of the samples, if I recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, sometimes there's a need. Um, our probation officers do. But I thought there was going to be collection. a minor, minor amount of need mm -hmm. in that to, for us to do that. Right. And if we're going to do, if they are going to do it, um, drinking so much water can actually dilute the, uh, the test. So if they go to the facility and they give the excuse, well, um, I just went to the restroom, and they can actually go through, their staff is going to monitor them. They're going to watch to make sure that they don't uh, drink more than 15 glasses of water uh, within a period uh, in order to dilute that. You're giving people ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, a, a criminal, you don't know, need to get, you, they're inventing new ideas every day. Again, this is just something we partnered with Mercy on the TB clinic. They've done a wonderful job, multiple locations, cost is comparable, certified lab, and we're not taking business away from a private company. Well, I'm not too concerned about that, but in my discussions with uh, Ms. Barella the other day, though, after following up to see where we were at on mm -hmm. that, uh, last year it was 1,876 tests, you told me. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you give me the statistics is what we're looking forward to. You said your staff through what they've gone through, whatever changes in rules and laws, we're looking at how many possible tests just from your organization? Well, I know that um, just the kids on our, the juveniles who are on our specialized dockets required, are required to be tested one to two times a week, and they're usually with us for six to 12 months. And we have a capacity, we have three special, well, we have two juvenile specialized dockets with a capacity of up to 20 juveniles each. Um, we're at about half capacity right now between the two of them. And we have about 230 juveniles on probation, and they're required to be tested one to two times a month, and they usually are on probation about six to 12 months. 
So um, not every one of those requires a full screen, um, but having that available in the event we need it, um, you know, is obviously optimal. Well, you're giving me numbers. It could be up to 3,000 going forward. It could be if everyone, yeah, was required to have a full screen or a partial screen. 3,000 a month? No. no. No, okay, no. because I know well, the number that you gave was about 800 a month. I think that was including different agencies. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Well, just their, I'm oh, okay. just their okay. issue alone was about 3000 over a year's time. Could, could be, be up to. Up to, sure. And at $30 cost, that's $90,000. I'm still sticking by my administrator's numbers at the 5 or $6 per. Now, even if they had to go to full time, we still wouldn't meet that cost of an employee with benefits. And I still think it's a operation that government's supposed to be providing right here across the street from the Justice Center uh, with your clients and uh, I'm just uh, still at that point and not taking anything away from Mercy they're good partners they're good corporate people in the county but in regards to this and speaking with the administrator and speaking to the judges they still would like to see it be here and have us do it mm -hmm. so I mean that's just not, and as I said, I know the argument. position of the others, um, children's services, law Ricotta, enforcement, the right. municipal courts, you know, they, their <laughs> position remains consistent with that as well. Does Lorraine City use our lab also, or they have their own? I, I don't, actually, I don't know if the city of Lorraine does. I know we had... Um, they, uh, they, they use the lab. Mm -hmm. they, I, well, I was just thinking, I mean, my, my big concern, I think, is for a lot of people that don't have transportation, um, I know Abbey Road doesn't seem far when you have a car, but if you're walking, it's a long walk to go to take a test, especially in wintertime coming and things. But it seems Lakata's here. Everything is close by this location, walking distance, easy walking distance. And I'm afraid we might lose some people if they have to try to find a ride or walk all the way down to Abbey Road. But the Lorraine, having it in one facility in Lorraine would be nice. Yeah. Well, the thing that we have to remember, though, too, is because the courts are here and Lakata's in, in within, mm -hmm. you know, and a few children blocks. And children's services. Right. Everybody's right, right here. Um, they still have to get here. Right, but you if know, somebody the, drops it, them off here right. to take care of all their business, they don't have to try to get another yeah. ride to go well, to and again, location. Even if we were setting it up here, we were looking at the probation officers, which is primarily for us, would be taking the samples. If they're not taking the samples, then you have the locations where other individuals could go. And are we looking at thirty dollars compared arguing. to five dollars per? I mean, unless it's test positive and you need a full screen, is that what we were looking at, Mr. Cordes? Your costs are about forty thousand to forty-five thousand dollars per year for us to do it here, plus whatever costs. I, I, gave, I gave you a range, right. it, and and I, I also explained that we'd have to take a look at this over a period of time and there's there was a lot of outside entities that were doing this before that that may have sought other ways of dealing with their issues that we'll hopefully be able to bring back um, the i know lakata has demonstrated uh, a desire to do this near right right around the corner right here the street, right? um the uh so i mean there's several things that that can be done together you know, I sat down with Emmy. I went over the cost. I took the fixed cost, the fixed cost of the materials that were necessary. I, I took all the overhead that I, I felt was applicable to it, and then of course staffing concerns. And I will say that I did this on, based upon a part-time employee. Uh, what's that, Jerry? Uh, I was just going to mention the concern of the prosecutor's office and the law enforcement people that we have talked to is there are going to be times when we're going to need testimony at court. I don't know what additional cost that's going to be, but um, you know, obviously uh, you know, there's a convenience factor with having an employee right across the street who is not going to have to come over and wait for their turn. You know, so I mean, I don't know if Mercy is taking an account. We may be having to call their personnel over here. You may wait around a day and not testify and come ha have to come back the, the next mm -hmm. day. Um, as it stands now, any time we need to talk to the drug, uh, the crime lab people, all we got to do is go across mm -hmm. the street well, and talk to them. Well, I did bring that up with Mercy, and Mercy currently with DUIs and that because they do the blood tests uh, or, you know, for um, individuals that come in. Um, 
they test that and they have to go in and they have to testify in court. I think as a legally it would be better to have a certified lab technician coming in and where they can go through and they can show the procedures that they have and um, done it thousands of times over um, would help uh, and help fight anything that a you know defense attorney may bring up. Uh, so the I'm other thing as far as the stop you there on that part though. Jerry, have we had many instances where our drug lab has been found to not be competent? I mean, I haven't heard any complaints regards to that. No. I mean, there, there's obviously been a couple instances with particular tests and things, but not few and far between, to my knowledge. To the contrary, I received an email. Um, says I've been, Ms. Kakowski, I've been informed that you recently contacted lo local police department evidence custodians for feedback on the Lorain County Crime Lab. I wanted to offer to you that as the supervisor of the property and evidence room at the Lorain Police Department that the Lorain County Crime Lab is doing a fantastic job with their drug turnaround times. I have seen rush orders that were submitted, tested, and reported on in 60 minutes or less. The Lorain PD submits about 800 drug items to the lab every year and I have no complaints with the performance of the Lorain County Crime Lab in the area of drug testing. Recent budget cuts to the lab, however, have seriously hampered urine and fingerprint testing and we at LPD would like to see those services once one day restored. Thank you for your support. You can provide the Lorain County Crime Lab and Lorain County Law Enforcement. Mark S. McCoy, Detective Sergeant Criminal Investigation Unit. So, I mean, it sounds like they're doing pretty darn good job. Yeah, no, I think that's our job as government to provide those services. I mean, we have law enforcement asking for it. We've got our domestic relations. We have our children's Lakata. services department. We have Lakata, the outside agencies. And yeah. I don't know what multitude of those also. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at doing it at a cost that is less than what we're going to send it out to do. And the performance is, I'm guessing, in the high 90 percentile of success in doing it properly. I just don't see a reason to change it. No offense to yeah. the work you've been doing, Commissioner. Yeah, I appreciate you looking at other right. options, but I think uh, we just need to go forward with doing it ourselves. And I believe that we, we do need it. Um, uh, and with all respect, I know Jim does a great job just talking with the different uh, departments because there are experts in there. Um, the cost analysis coming up, uh, they believe it's going to be a little short. And it's not that, and I'm talking with the other government agencies as well. Um, and when they were, when I told them five to six dollars, um, when they're looking at the the calibration of the equipment, the um, all the maintenance that has to be done, they're questioning it, and then also the, with the amount of labor. So it could I, be more. Like I said, I think my yeah. biggest concern is the people having barriers to. Um, transportation and, yeah, and we don't have a great transit system to re rely upon like we all know so. yeah, well, well, let me add this I'm, I'm not even disputing what Commissioner Williams says I took this, the information that was provided right. and of course I'm, I'm, I'm counting on the, the credibility of that information that was provided <laughs> to me um, it, and that's working with a part-time person which holds down the the labor cost but if should that should that change, that's going to change the whole equation. As we know, a full-time employee costs us vastly more than a part-time. Double. <laughs> and I also indicated I want to re reaffirm this, depending, you know, because what it sounds like the board may be going forward here. I told you there's going to be a burn on this. This right. was not going to be a full absorption model. Because of the that, equipment? Well, because of the equipment and because of trying to hold the cost of the test down a bit. I, I got to remind all of us that <laughs> the common police court is a, as part of the general fund, so I'm not looking to drive up cost to drive up cost over the co over common police so Jody can call me and say I need more money. <laughs> and so you know it's one hand washing the other. We're trying to get these things done collaboratively together. Mm -hmm. uh, so trying to keep the cost as trimmed as possible helps us with our general fund budget. But I did indicate to you that there would be uh, a, a burn on this. Jim, the burn's either way, though. Let's say your costs are off. You're only figuring, maybe it's $15 a test, okay? Instead of your 5 or $6 expectation, you're saying forty dollars or $45,000 a year, it's $15. That's still half of what we're going to be sending out that we're funding anyway for the $30 test the outside organization we still it's a burn either way it's well, well I, I have fund. to put, I have to put the 30 and the five dollar in the perspective I don't think that's being understood 
Ours is not five compared to 30. It's 25 compared to 30 because we're talking about each test. So, so when Commissioner Williams was explaining that, he took the average five panel test to come up with the 30, correct? No, and actually that's going to be at uh, the 10, which is truly a 12 panel test because that's what was indicated that they would need that 10 to 12 panels. Now, now my understanding was that, we, that we're going to charge $5 a panel. And that was, we, we pushed that number up pretty high. I think the actual supply cost and, and everything running into the machine was like $3.10. Right. Uh, so we, we pushed that up. But see, that's where we, we get a lot of confusion into the equation of exactly what we're talking about mm -hmm. and, and making sure that, that our comparison is, is the same. Right, but we're comparing to the five panel, and you talked about we were a little bit over three bucks cost. That's where I got my fifteen dollar number on an average five panel is what we've been speaking of. Okay. Okay. And so I what? I gave my fifteen dollar cost. What would you look at if it was, uh, say, a twelve panel? Well, what we're going to charge is sixty for that, but that may, that's not going to be my cost. I'm looking at at providing a responsible cost out into the into the community. Mm -hmm. My the actual cost. 12, probably in, in the low 30s. Actually, low 30s, you said? Yeah. It hadn't, we hadn't looked at it that way. We looked at a one piece and then right. we stacked and tiered those. The, the, uh, and, and one of my, my underwriting, underwriting goals while I was establishing the cost data was to drive down the cost as best I could for domestic relations, who is a general fund department. Hmm. So, now, I think Sorry. what's interesting too is what came out, and I don't think you were aware of this, is doing swab testing for I wasn't alcohol aware of that. and um, additional testing that's going to be the courts are going to be asking for. So it just, it's going to grow. Response, Jody? Um, swab testing and stuff? Well, I, I think one of the, because I know one of the, uh, Children's Services right now uses a lot of the cheek swab testing out in the field, and so that had been a prior question as to whether that could be available um, with respect to just the kind of testing they were doing. But that's not a um, deal breaker, I guess. It's you know, it's just a matter of looking at alternatives to that. So would it be would it be easier if we were doing cheek swab testing over actual capturing of a sample? Um, no, I think that there's I think that that's kind of a, a one of the variables of needs is that sometimes out in the field, at least for my understanding is for children's services, and they really could speak to this um, better than I can, but you know, sometimes it's easier for them to do the cheek swab out in the field, um, but that's not to say that that's their only need. Um, as I said, I think kind of overall, you know, it's the capturing the samples and bringing in the samples, is, and so it was just a question as to whether that was an option, but that's not a, the deciding you know, kind of factor. Okay. Commissioners? To I'd like to move forward with it, too. It, you're moving forward with it? The county? No, with the county. Oh, okay. Yes. And, and just, this is just a this no, go ahead. between us no, and that. I, I, I truly believe we need the testing. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel that we should go through a certified lab. The cost is very comparable on it. So, um, well, they keep talking about the need here, Todd, yeah. the accessibility. That's my concern that we're providing. I mean, you just got it from uh, Detective McCoy, Sergeant McCoy, mm -hmm. Captain, mm -hmm. Lieutenant McCoy. I have no mark. We went to high school together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're talking about it's done in 60 minutes. Turn around, they have what they need. I mean, I think we're talking about an urgency part of this in regards to the That is certain things, but your, your test to go through in order to try to find it and maintain the levels you know, to be able, if you have someone that comes in, they're tested. I believe I, they were talking about the drug task force and testing drugs. This is going to be your analysis. Right, I understand. Um, so going through testing it and then going in, and once you get a positive, you have to retest it, and then you have to take a look into the issues of is there any prescription drugs, legal prescription drugs that they're taking. So to right. say that you're going to be able to get that within an hour on that, um, I believe he was talking about the actual test of a drug to say, you know, hey, is this cocaine? No, I you said your analysis. No, they also did it. Analysis. Your analysis okay, maybe I heard you wrong. I thought they said they drug test. Right. Okay. They covered both points of it, yeah. and since what's been happening, it's been a hindrance to law enforcement's right. ability to do their job. Yeah. And 
You know, the requirement that we put out forward when we're talking with Mercy was 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, if we need to tighten that up, I'm sure Mercy would be willing to look into it to see if they could change it. I'm pretty comfortable. Yeah. Going and we're going to have to be committed this. since we're going to have to purchase a piece of equipment. Right. So. I'm going to give this to Teresa. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Jody, I appreciate your time. And you have one? Oh, okay. You, need it? <laughs> you want me to read it? No, you can. You're the clerk. <laughs> In the matter of requesting proposals for the drug testing system, on site urinalysis, substance abuse testing facility, said proposals will be accepted until October 10th at 2 p.m. The testing facility for Lorain County will be done in Lorain County Crime Drug Lab Courthouse, lower level, 308 Second Street. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Yes. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, just since we're calling for a resolution on this, I do support the need for a crime lab. I just believe we would be better off using a private certified company. We appreciate the time you put on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has gotten to the point and gotten to the yep. point we keep no, getting the need from the different departments. And Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Or no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I God. was first. <laughs> I was first. No. Unanimous. <laughs> the first one. No, no. The first one. no correction. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been losing those coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an A, right? That's an A. <laughs> okay. That's the end of my report, Tom. Oh, I forgot that we were in report. Yeah. Yeah. That's my report. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> Ted, you're taking too long anymore. <laughs> um, you could have proved it two months ago. We wouldn't have gone through this. Yeah. Well, um, do yeah, we look into it, and you know, uh, to me, that's what uh, is important about having um, different viewpoints. We get everything out there. Actually, um, just been everywhere, and um, one thing I do want to bring up is is the high schools in our county doing a great job. We got homecomings going up, the events that the, the teachers are getting involved, counselors. And um, I'll pick up my daughter, Lola. She's a freshman at Amherst Steel. And uh, um, today is Spirit Week, and she's wearing a what I call a Tony the Tiger pajamas. They wear p pajamas to school. And Tony the Tiger pajamas? Yeah, she's got the uh, Tiger pajamas, and she had her soccer jersey on. And uh, I was just waiting for her to go out and pass out uh, frosted flakes to her, um, to her friends. But uh, great job, schools, with the homecoming. and. Uh, been some excellent football too. Yeah, great football around the county, man. We have some great teams. I wish I could have been that Midview Avon game. We yeah, well, what you got wow. Midview and North Ridgeville, I think yeah. this week that got should some be a great, great teams going on. Yeah. End of my report. Next Wednesday, two o'clock, will be the Records Commission meeting. Board correspondence. Move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Public comment. David Ashenhurst, welcome back. I saw you walking down the sidewalk Saturday when I was coming back from Perkins over on 250. I said, David Ashenhurst. Now I see mm. you. You're becoming legendary. I, apparently. Um, <laughs> and not just in my own mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Commissioners. David Ashenhurst, Oberlin. Um, well, after the pajama talk, I'm a little reluctant to ask this, but. Um, <laughs> Could we have a little more information about the dangerous wild animal response team? Yeah, um, you want to do that? Go ahead. It, it's, it's really simple. Uh, after the incidents that occurred uh, a couple times in the state with release of wild animals into the community, the exotic animals posed a significant threat that really w the community wasn't prepared to deal with. How many people know how to run around and go chase bears and tigers? And we're good at right. dogs. We're marginal with cats, uh, but the bigger animals, today. there was really nothing <laughs> oh in place. My. So the state came up with a requirement to have uh, these these type arrangements so that specialized, uh, I wouldn't say equipment, but at least strategically we, we have an understanding of the resources that are available to combat that problem with exotic animals that may be loose, uh, turned loose into the community. In case there's a llama stampede or something. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, I, crazy llamas, they spit a lot. You know, it, it, it would. I'm glad it's to understand that it is previously captive wild animals that we're Correct. talking about right. and not that we have discovered we have cougars in the metro parks or something. No. Thank you. And, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I remember when I did a road patrol with the deputies. Thank you. Uh, we were out in Columbia uh, Township trying to catch a goat 
for spending an hour trying to lasso. A lot of dangerous goats out there, are there? And they're not da- well, you know, they rammed at me, but, you know, we're just talking about different animals, larger animals that they're not prepared to catch. <laughs> it was a goat. I, I think this is more gad. You I know. Tigers and bears. Bears. Yeah, I know. And monkeys. I, I, it oh just my. popped in my mind Elephants. about to go. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing that poor deputy out Anyone there. Anyone else wishing to address the board this morning? <laughs> Motion going executive session is outlined by the county administrator. Second. Mr. Kayla. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorraine County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 930 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.